Every time you do rear brake maintenance, either brake pads or flushing brake fluid from the system, it's a good idea to check and lubricate your foot pedal pivot point there. It's mounted to this V-shaped bracket that's mounted to the frame and there's a bolt on the back side here that needs to be undone in order to pull this bracket off the peg that's mounting it to the bracket. So to get to the bolt you need to undo those two bolts. All of these bolts need a 6mm Allen key like so and you also need some kind of thread lock say blue for the threads to make sure these bolts don't get lost during riding and they are not only tightened but they are also secured with this thread lock. From here on it's very straightforward. Forward, loosen bolt, remove bolt to get to this one here that's mounting the foot pedal. I've removed those mounting bolts. They have red thread lock on them. I also took out the bolts from this plate. This is this looks like just for trim, but it's actually holding this master cylinder to the bracket. I've got the master cylinder. This moves around quite a bit, but make sure it's not yanked out here. It shouldn't be leaking out. But some of the, this is a flexible pipe here or, or, or brake line. This one is the switches, also flexi line, but this one is rigid, uh, rigid pipes. So they're kind of important. Then the bracket pivots around like so, and it's fine. Not only pivots down, but but also turns around like so freely. That's fine. It's meant to be. That's a threaded rod, and all of the nuts, all three of the nuts turn with the rod so there is, it's not harming this reservoir it doesn't need resetting, recalibrating or anything with this reservoir but before this can swing down there is the switch here right here this is your rear brake switch um, when you remove it make sure you don't break the aluminum casting like I did oops there. It'll still work but because this is made of aluminum and this itty bit is broken out of it uh, my brake light switch will need special attention. So this is the bolt we're trying to dig out and, and as you can hear this foot peg is scraping and scratching everything as is. So I'm going to disconnect it there using these very straightforward needle nose pliers there to straighten that cotter pin and then we can get to this bolt I've taken this connection apart this is the cotter pin that came out it's uh, made of ductile metal and could be reused but it's a bad practice to reuse it so I recommend that you replace it could be reused in a pinch or any kind of soft wire can be placed through the hole like tie wire I want to show you this pivot point as well because it often gets overlooked. This also needs to be cleaned. It's massively filthy. Very straightforward cleaning with uh, lacquer thinner. So this pivot point here is pulling down the master cylinder. Okay, So this pivot point here is going to get lubricated, greased, and this one as well. So two pivot points. And the foot pack comes out. On this side of the bench grinder is a brass wire wheel. Brass is a lot softer than steel. It's perfect for cleaning rust up. Uh, it's not especially loud, but uh, I'm gonna polish this one a little bit. There, it's coming along. Okay. You can see the surface that it polished so that's how it looks like even aluminum it's brass wheel is a lot softer than the aluminum so it's not gonna gouge it or damage it just gonna polish it like so so the corrosion is still somewhat visible on the surface where or the surface deterioration but it's not gonna be ugly like that the foot pack mounting bolt also has this red thread lock on it so that's how it should go back with fresh red thread lock on it 
the parts have been cleaned up and I want to point out a few fitting points here on the foot peg there is this flat surface there that should meet with the flat surface made into the bracket like so that's how the bolt should go in and these flat surfaces hold the foot peg from rotating around that single bolt okay so that's that fit is important there now the bad news let's take a look at this corrosion this was cleaned up with a wire wheel this is a steel component and you can see some corrosion on it from past winters that's normal that that amount of pitting is the, what uh, one would expect so that's how this looks like not too fancy but it's okay and this one is more problematic the small pin was also cleaned together with this spring so no issues on this one but corrosion and wear is evident but no gouging no deep gouging so this can go back spring is good I just cleaned the hook on a wire wheel very straightforward so I'll try to kind of improve this design and come up with something that works a little better than the existing one because this is gonna be problematic I hope that makes sense that this sideways play allows the brake pedal to rotate this way when you apply force on it and it will start digging in so it's a bad design I'll try to come up with a sleeve that fits on this one to minimize this sideways wobble because this is ridiculous so this washer is what I came up with this flat part will seat somewhere there like so and it's it's gonna work to some degree stopping this pedal from rotating sideways too much I want to point out a couple of fitting things here and the spring is gonna go here and you can see it's also gouged out there because of the spring or where the spring is seated so that's to be expected normal there normal wear and tear yeah nothing lasts forever so steel rubbing against aluminum not a whole lot anyone can do about the depth of this keyway here or this this flattened portion when these two components are together is such that about a millimeter that not much of the shoulder is still showing and that's for full seating in this position here uh, you can see the uh, shoulder of the, uh, the the flat shoulder showing because uh, it's it's covered up we'll uh, show you how the spring goes on all right so assembly this is your brakes it's a critical component and then this flat portion there that keyway should match the keyway in this bracket here which is at my thumb that flattened portion there so these are together and then this is a test fit so I'm not applying thread lock yeah this test fit should work so this is how you also tighten this for your final assembly and when it's tight they only work when they are rotated into their correct position there and for tightening you can tighten this thing on a bench like this just put it down and tighten it like so when this is tightened the pedal should still freely move but it doesn't have a whole lot of degree of motion this hook is going to hit the underside of the bracket after a while such as at around this point and that's fine and also the top here let me just show you this maybe ah this one okay you see this is a raised surface starting at this point and this is a, this is a raised surface here and this is a lower Part, that's the factory original part okay or, or height so it should work 
like so but eventually this part is going to hit that corner okay there so your brake lever is not going to rotate or what brake pedal is not going to rotate further down than this and is not going to rotate higher up than this it's maybe 45 degrees maximum okay that's that's enough for braking so it's not gonna turn around 360 it's fitted properly it's just gonna move this much 45 degrees or so that's all you need from hook to bracket contact to pedal uh, shoulder to bracket corner maximum it needs to move just this much for braking basically okay and even when it's tight tighten to the specifications which I'm just gonna eyeball this is a prototype there okay this is tight there this should still be freely moving so that's how this fit looks like don't force it any more than it should so this is this is it nice so I'm done with thread locking I found blue blue is also good a little weaker than red good enough with the leftover red on it it's gonna make it work so next one spring you have three hooks on the spring two of them go on well one on the pedal one on the bracket and the third one should catch the brake light plunger so when you place it this hook should be this hook should be facing up so you can connect your brake light stuff to it what you need to do is say hook it on the brake lever and now you need to stretch it with a screwdriver uh, where's my screwdriver so this is how the fitted spring looks like I gave up on this screwdriver idea fairly early on I just used one of the hooks in the scaffold frame here I hooked on the what is it this switch and in this position yeah I put some weight on it until both of these hooks were in position so that's that so that's how it should look like in normal operation and this motion here is producing motion at the brake piston squeezing the brake pads together stopping the vehicle so that's good to go back on the motorcycle 20 seconds from here on I've just placed the blue thread lock on that bolt and I'm putting these bolts in first so they line up everything good good um, I'm centering this bracket like so yeah somewhere somewhere there looks good there and there and this should be tightened to specs with the while the thread lock is still fresh on it so the tightening specs on these two bolts is 25 newton meters this is a metric bike it also equivalent to 18 foot pounds of torque no specs on these two just just this one and this one also same same for that one 25 newton meters or equivalent to about 18 foot pounds of torque not a whole lot don't forget the thread lock all three bolts I wanna put this brake light thing on while I can reach it here it's a it's a tight squeeze there uh, let me get you a close-up yeah maybe from here you can see some of it there there's the switch this is the horizontal bracket in which it sits that spring should catch the other springs hook once the switch end is in the socket placed properly there let's see if I can do this with one hand mm, uh, not really I need to the switch looks like this when it's assembled and somewhat vertical kind of close enough it's in place and the hook end of the spring is let's see maybe from here yeah is in place here yeah you can just barely see it or not 
Yeah, just barely there. Okay, so that's in place. And when the pedal works, that plunger should extend, closing the circuit and the brake light should come on. This should be checked. Lastly, I've got the master cylinder. This moves around quite a bit, so just move it around the best you can. Line it up, make sure you don't cross thread, because as is, it looks like it's gonna need to be rotated before they rotate it this way. There, before it gets parallel with this bracket part. Almost there. So, I'm just lining up the last few bolts here to make sure they do go in straight like that same as that one and I don't have a torque specs for these two bolts so let's think it through this is a steel bolt going into a aluminum between the two of them the aluminum is weaker if you over tighten these two bolts and the threads will be stripped the threads that will fail will be inside the aluminum in the brake reservoir. Brake reservoir repair is completely unnecessary. So use some good judgment. Don't over tighten these, especially that the force applied is going in this direction with the brake pedal. And these bolts hold in this direction, clamp these pieces together. So there isn't a whole lot of clamping force that's needed to run in this direction for the... F <laughs> this reservoir just needs to be kept in place so that, so that it doesn't shift position when it's being compressed. Okay, so it doesn't shift up or sideways out of the way. So without these bolts, it would happen. So uh, this clamping force doesn't need to be a whole lot. I don't have a number for it, but for now, it just needs to be kept in place so it's not there, so it's snug sideways, okay? That's all. Last item, check your brake light. You can check it this way, but of course you need to turn the key on, which is done now. And let's check out the brake light. So, when I I'm gonna pull the plunger on the switch, like so. Let's see that brake light. Yeah, okay, so that works so far. So we know that the wire works and the switch works. So let's see how this works with the pedal force. Oh yeah, flawless. And the brakes still work. You can see that the pedal is forcing the brake piston forward towards the wheel